Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing Raphael. No, not a Ninja Turtle. Instead, Zen 4 based Ryzen, which will be on the AM5 socket. Zen 4 is going to bring a host of architectural improvements. We'll go over just a few in a moment, or at least the rumours. But we also have brand new technology such as DDR5, which will have interesting ramifications, particularly in the higher core count SKUs. Nevertheless, there has been a lot of discussion as to, well, the core counts for AM5, and both Executable Fix and Patrick on Twitter, I'll link both their accounts, of course, in the video description, have stated that we will see up to 16 cores for these particular processors. Now, yeah, that matches up very closely with what I've leaked a couple of times in the past, that AMD were thinking of 24 cores for the AM5 socket's debut. However, they basically decided that this is not something that they wish to pursue. And perhaps in the future, they may increase core count, or it's going to be even weirder, I suppose, when we see the heterogeneous, big, little, whatever the hell you want to call it, architecture come into play. And yeah... This does seem to be pretty accurate, 16 cores for the mainstream, and then naturally we can see uh, much higher core counts for both Fred Ripper and, of course, Epic. However, there is an interesting twist to this, and I don't really know how much stock and faith I have in it. However, I have been told that while the, uh, we see 16 core models uh, currently being prototyped at AMD, there is allegedly a 24 core that has at least been tested. Now, I don't know whether it's actually in silicon form or not, but allegedly AMD were testing it out. However, I don't know if it's ever going to be released. I just have heard, and again, it could be incorrect, because almost all of my sources, including a couple of motherboard sources, have told me that uh, it's only going to be 16 cores, but I am being told that there has been a 24 core that maybe AMD has ready now. So this does leave us with a couple of possibilities. The first is that this information is inaccurate. The negative of saying that, though, is a couple of people have told me that they were considering 24 cores. The second option is that 24 cores were considered, but they've just said, yeah, that ain't happening, Jack. No, we're not doing it. I don't know why Jack, but whatever. And the third possibility is it's something that AMD are going to keep in reserve because, of course, Intel will be releasing Raptor Lake and then, um, well, who knows what the heck Intel are going to be doing in the future. So it's possible that AMD could keep it in reserve if Intel does pull a rabbit out of the hat. It shouldn't be that hard for them to go 24 cores. Regardless of the core count, I'm pretty certain at this point we're going to see 16 cores for the mainstream, which honestly is going to be absolutely fine. It's going to kick butt, and we're going to see up to 170 watt TDP. Now, I'm hearing that this is going to only be for maybe select slash halo skews, possibly one or two. But yeah, that is quite a high TDP. But honestly, TDP figures, <laughs> well... Yeah, it's like, what does TDP mean anymore? I mean, I'm sure we're going to get someone really like meticulously writing out an answer, but just in general, like it, it becomes really tricky to discuss TDP in a lot of workloads. And obviously companies like NVIDIA and AMD and Intel are kind of just pushing the spec all of the time, especially if you're dealing with like, you know, turbo frequencies and yeah, it's, it's just a whole thing, and really I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Also, a quick reminder, you know, the uh, Raphael platform itself. Interestingly, Gamers Nexus, back in March 2020, received kind of a an overview of what we can expect, and they were told that it's up to 105 watts. I think that the vast majority of SKUs are going to be, you know, 105, maybe a little bit higher watts anyway. But you can see that there are major improvements in the TDP. It's still going to be two-way S17, so not too surprising there. And you can also see the code names. I still love the fact that we're seeing Durango as a code name, assuming that is actually true, just because, of course, it used to be a code name of, you know, the Xbox One back in the day. So, I don't know, for some reason that just tickles me. Like, I, I, that was terrible. Anyway, the point of the matter is that, yeah, um, Zen 4 is going to be really interesting. And we were discussing, you know, Alder Lake quite a bit yesterday. And I do think that Intel can be rather competitive against Zen 3. The problem that they have is that 
Zen 4 is going to be really what is kind of around when, you know, their new architecture launches. And really and truly, Alder Lake is going to have quite a short shelf life. So I think at this point, it kind of feels like Intel are just pushing their roadmap through as quickly as possible. And AMD are somewhat in less of a rush. But of course, that isn't to say that they're just going to sit on their hands for the rest of the season. And there is a very interesting thing too concerning the RTX 30 series. So recently I put out a video discussing RTX 40 aka Lovelace and the TLDR of that video is that Lovelace is going to launch very late next year. It's going to be like Q4 and the performance targets are apparently two times or greater than that of the RTX 3090. Indeed, it seems like it's possibly even going to be higher. One of my sources told me it was about 2.2. Maybe some Halo SKUs going a little bit higher, like, you know, the Supreme Overclocked variants. But just in general, I am expecting around 2.2, which is going to be, at least according to what I'm hearing, going to be lower than RDNA 3. But, and you know there's going to be a but, there is an interesting blip on the horizon because that is quite a long time. Like, even if you say it is going to be Q4, let's even assume it's quite early Q4, which I think is not super realistic. I personally think it's going to be like November, but I don't have any evidence to base that on. We're still talking about many months, which, you know, I, I personally think that uh, Papa would like some pennies before that. And so we are already hearing quite a lot of rumors from Copa 27 Kimmy and a number of others of an RTX uh, 30 Super Series. Now, whether this is going to be a full refresh isn't 100% clear. It doesn't seem like it is, but it looks like GA103 is going to be reborn. And Copity has basically confirmed that it's going to not only be a, that is the Super Series, SKUs for the uh, desktop, but we're also going to see them for mobile as well. And this kind of matches what I was told a couple of days ago when I reported the news, although I don't necessarily know if this is going to be the end of it, whether we are going to see an RTX 30 refresh in the traditional sense. And perhaps the most interesting thing for me is if we're going to see a increase in the amount of RAM. Now personally, and I've said this in a couple of videos previously, I think that, you know, the amount of RAM that Nvidia loaded onto their GPUs from a public and marketing perspective, wasn't necessarily enough. Yes, AMD has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and you can argue that a card like, let's say the 6800, possibly isn't going to use it in the vast majority of titles, but we don't know how games are gonna evolve in the future. We really do not. And there is a ton of debate about things like, you know, sampler feedback and texture streaming and whatever else, but, you know, direct storage is going to be really cool, but who the hell knows how games are going to evolve? And um, my personal perspective, and again, this is just my personal opinion, the 3060 Ti, I'm okay with it having uh, 8 gigabytes. I think the 3070 probably should have been nudged to 10, and the 3080 should have had 12. That's my opinion. I mean, obviously, with the way that NVIDIA constructed their architecture, they couldn't have necessarily gone with 16 gigabytes because then they would have had to have a really wide bus and that would have had its own, you know, host of problems because it's not like GDDR6X uh, X memory doesn't require power and whatever else. But yeah, that's just my personal opinion. So I do wonder if we're going to see something or another with, um, with uh, NVIDIA going forward, increasing the amount of RAM available for their cards. Because, you know, if we look at the RAM stack of NVIDIA, it's kind of all over the place, especially if you look at the lower SKUs, like the 3060, 3060 Ti and stuff. It's just, at least in my opinion, it's it's kind of interesting. And I think that a refresh of sorts would make sense. It kind of matches what NVIDIA have done in the past several times over at this point. Um, so, yeah, Papa wants more money. And this is just a small Brucey bonus bit of news that I'm going to throw in here. And credit to Lacuza for actually spotting this. It was an interview with developers over at Digital Foundry who were discussing Doom Eternal. 
specifically quite early in the video they were talking about you know optimization around different architectures and systems and of course they mentioned that Vulkan is used on the PC for ray tracing I have to say that it looks really good and as an aside I do wonder now that they are purchased of course technically by Microsoft whether we're going to see just well everything shift to DirectX 12 with the studio when it comes to creating PC games and whether Vulkan is going to be somewhat left out in the cold I don't know it's it's a very interesting quandary I wonder what discussions are being had internally and you know I kind of don't blame um, Bethesda if they did do that because if you're creating, I don't know what the hell the next Doom's going to be called. Let's just call it Doom in Space. Why not? So if Doom in Space is going to be exclusive to the Xbox platform, and we can probably guess it is because they've mentioned a couple of games that are already going to be exclusive from ZeniMax previously, but again, I could be wrong. Why wouldn't they use an API which has a lot of similarities across the two platforms that primarily it's going to be targeted on? That is, of course both PC and Xbox. But that aside, they did mention something very interesting concerning the PlayStation 5. We actually have a name now as to the API, and that is AGC. Unfortunately, we don't know any major technical details. In fact, and this is just a pure guess on my part, they might have even ever so slightly broken NDA, even revealing the name of the API. I don't think Sony are going to start spanking them, though. I don't think, you know, Mark Cerny is going to put anyone over his knee. It's probably so minor of a issue. They're probably just going to get like an email and say, hey, could you maybe just run an interview by us first if you do happen to mention anything regarding our system? And obviously, Sony have been really ultra cagey with everything on the system at this point. Like, I'm sure that they, at this point, I'm surprised that they even mentioned the system has power. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. But they did say that the API is ultra low level, which makes sense given it's a console. And, you know, at the end of the day, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, they all kind of have their own APIs and SDKs and stuff like that. So this is not a huge piece of news. That's why I'm just kind of throwing it in here because I just find it more interesting than anything else because it seems like the API has changed, at least in name and everything else over the PS4 and of course the PS3 whereas previously we were seeing like GNM and GNMX which were both low and high level APIs so at least this specific API is higher uh, sorry it's the lowest level possible so you're almost directly addressing the hardware and yeah unfortunately they didn't mention any real specifics at least as what I saw in the interview they didn't really mention any specifics as to the major differences between the two platforms which is a bit of a shame. Well, I think that's just about it for this video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, well, you know what to do. You click the like button and subscribe and do the YouTube bell thing because uh, it's YouTube and well, yeah. Anyway, with that said, thanks very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.